Hello darlings, my name is Violeta and welcome to my first video on booktube. Literature has held a significant role in my life for many years and now I'm happy to finally open up and share my passions with all of you. And today we embark on a journey through the pages of my favorite literary companions of all time. And I know that it's kind of classic way to start your booktube journey by introducing the selection of beloved books. Uh, but mm, maybe in this way, you, my new viewers, can take a glimpse on my bookish soul, my taste in books, and even find Conrad spirit in the words that I've cherished. I'm a true lover of classics, so obviously my selection will must include this type of books. And books in my list will be arranged according to the sequence in which I read them all. And without further ado, let's dive in. And the first one is The Count of Monte Cristo. This story really captured my heart. When I was 13, my mom recommended it to me, and I'm incredibly thankful to her for that, because this text is a masterpiece of intrigue, revenge, and unforgettable characters. Back then, it was likely the biggest book I had ever come across in my life. I was initially hooked up by the intriguing plot, but what really made a home in my heart was how deep and meaningful this book turned out to be. About the plot. Set in 19th century France, this story revolves around themes of betrayal and redemption. And there are two main stages in the book, path of uh, sailor at Montantes and the revenge of enigmatic Count of Monte Cristo, who actually turned out to be the same person. Overall, the Count of Monte Cristo is this exploration of human's nature, how they seek revenge, and the way choices shape our lives. Uh, there is a mix of adventure, mystery, and even a dash of romance. It's a really exciting read. I highly recommend you. Next up, we have Goethe's Faust, and it's practically a blueprint for world literature. You've got this character selling their soul for all these desires, and its ultimate exploration of the age-old question what would you give up or what you want? Faust, the main character, strikes a deal with the devil Mephistopheles to get all pleasures and knowledge in exchange for his soul. It's this exploration of what we want and the consequences of those wants. And let's not forget about the language. Gauss's words are like this intricate tapestry that waves philosophy and poetic expression. Reading Faust is when you get swept in the rhythm of the lines and then suddenly you are pondering in the meaning of life and duality of human nature. The third book is The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco and Reading this text has been one of the most enjoyable reading experiences in my life. Can you just imagine that this book actually combines genres of detective, historical and philosophical novels at the same time, deeply revealing each of these areas? Set in an Italian monastery of 14th century where a series of gruesome deaths unravel against the backdrop of theological debates and secret knowledge, Echo's narrative brilliantly combines detective fiction with the complex theological discussions, reflecting the realities of a medieval monastery. Yeah, I know it sounds a bit crazy and the thing can break your brain, but it's worth it, I assure you. In the main characters, Echo provides us with the reference to the famous detective duo Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, characters that mirror their dynamic, uh, brother William of Baskerville and Edsa of Milk were sent to the monastery with the task of solving uh, a series of horrible deaths. The setting itself is like a character. Imagine you are in the abbey surrounded by ancient books and all these mysterious monks. As you flip through the pages, you are deciphering cards hidden within the text, much like brother William does. It's this atmospheric journey where you are exploring the realms of human thought and the blurry line between truth and perception. 
So, the name of the rose isn't just a mystery, it's a mental workout. It challenges you to think, question and explore the grey areas. And the next one is Martin Eden by Jack London. A poem in exploration, of ambition and disillusionment. This novel follows Martin Eden's path from a working class sailor to a successful writer. Through his struggles with societal expectations, personal growth and the pursuit of artistic fulfillment, London paints a vivid picture of the complexities of our dreams and their consequences. This book is one of those rare gems that make you want to underline every single line, to copy down every quote, and Jack London's uh, storytelling is like treasure trove of richness, vividness, and eloquence. Uh, I believe that a lot of people who read him would agree with me on this. So Martin Eden isn't just a regular rags to riches tale, it's a deep dive into price, of ambition, and uh, complexities of human desires. Next one is The Little Print by Antoine de saint exupéry I'm pretty sure that most of you have either read or at least heard about the story, but in my humble opinion, uh, people should give it a read every now and then. It's got those truths, I guess, that add flavor to life, and without them, life would be a lot less colorful. Uh, a bit empty and meaningless. This novella captures the essence of childhood wonder and bittersweet wisdom that comes with growing up. This short story is a magical ticket that um, lets you borrow the eyes of your inner childhood for a while. You get to see the world in that pure, unfiltered way we all used to when we were kids. Back in our childhood days, we didn't carry around the weight of responsibilities and problems like we do now. We could just suck up the moment and bask in the simple pleasures. It's something we all kind of miss in these days. Now let's talk about Shakespeare's King Lear, the harrowing exploration of power, betrayal and the human heart. And you know this shift from a fairy tale to Shakespeare's tragedy just perfectly mirrors my entire personality. I'm totally in love with Shakespeare, he's one of my favorite authors and I loved all his tragedies, but King Lear is mm, my favorite one. This isn't your average royal drama, it's an emotional roller coaster that delves deep into family, power and human nature. We have all kin dividing his kingdom among his daughters, setting off a chain reaction of madness, betrayal and redemption. The Shakespeare's language, the complexity of his characters and the timeless themes, that's what makes this play an enduring masterpiece. And that's the end of the first part of this video about my favorite books. If you want the next one, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you to everyone who has been with me on this journey so far. I hope you found this video engaging and insightful. If you enjoyed the content, please consider giving a thumbs up, leaving your thoughts in the comments and subscribing to my channel. Your support means a world to me as I make my debut on Booktube. And until next time, happy reading and let's continue discussing and exploring the worlds of books together.